Now at six, human rights activists march the streets of downtown Spokane, joining other cities across the country in support for George Floyd, who died in police custody. Good evening, it's great to have you here with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Jury selection begins Monday for the former police officer accused in the killing of Floyd. We do have team coverage tonight. Creme 2's Brandon T. Jones is live in downtown Spokane, where the march wrapped up earlier this evening. Brandon, what happened at today's event? Hey Tim, well you can all see this mural behind me and it really came together because of all of the events that took place over the summer. At one point there are protests almost every day across the nation, across the world and result because of the killing of George Floyd. Here in Spokane, thousands of people showed up marching through the streets every single weekend to voice their concerns. Today there was a protest in support of George Floyd in the trial that begins here on Monday and they're all just trying to use their voice and try to really showcase why they're concerned and their support for people who have been impacted from police brutality. I had an opportunity to speak with tons of people who showed up today. It's just a small group really started here at the pavilion at 2 p.m. They had multiple stops along the way in front of the Davenport Grand, right in front of the fountain at Riverfront, and they ended their protest here at the Black Lives Matter mural. I use my voice because I think that we can change Spokane. I think that Spokane has the capacity and the resources to change the way that we respond to the humans in our community. Yep, and like I was saying, it wasn't a large group today, nothing compared to those thousands of people who roamed the street. But what I could sense was that every single person who came out here was very passionate. And like I said, I had conversations with a few of them and talked about why they decided to use their voice. They all shared with me that they believe they can truly create change here in their own communities. And that change can ultimately be able to impact other places across the world. Tim. All right, Brandon Jones reporting live in downtown Spokane. Thanks so much. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives approved a bill to prevent police misconduct. Democrats named the legislation after George Floyd. It will now go to the Senate for a full vote. The George Floyd Justice in Policing Act would ban police chokeholds. It would also get rid of qualified immunity for officers and create national standards for policing. Jury selection is set to begin Monday for Derek Chauvin, the former police officer accused of killing Floyd. Chauvin was recorded kneeling on the back of Floyd's neck last summer. In the arrest that ended Floyd's life, reporter Lou Raguse gives us a look at the key players who will be taking part in the trial. The defendant, Derek Chauvin, was a Minneapolis police officer for 18 and a half years before he was charged with killing George Floyd. Again, Chauvin is represented by attorney Eric Nelson. He's been involved in high-profile cases, such as defending Amy Sensor for vehicular homicide in 2011. Nelson is part of a group of Twin Cities attorneys that takes turns representing police officers in criminal cases. At the prosecution table, Matthew Frank and Neil Katyal will be most visible. Frank has been an assistant attorney general for 21 years. Katyal is an East Coast attorney and former acting solicitor general. Attorney General Keith Ellison may be present in the courtroom, but is not expected to take part in questioning witnesses. Judge Peter Cahill will preside. He was appointed to the bench in 2007. For 10 years before that, he was one of Hennepin County's top prosecutors. The three other officers charged in Floyd's death, Tu Tau, J. Alexander King, and Thomas Lane, are on the prosecution's witness list, but if called to testify, they could plead the fifth and avoid answering questions if they think it would hurt them in their upcoming trial. One key witness will be Dr. Andrew Baker, Hennepin County's chief medical examiner since 2004. He performed the autopsy and ruled that Floyd died from cardiopulmonary arrest caused by Chauvin's restraint. But Baker added drugs and heart disease as other significant conditions, leaving cause of death as the most contentious issue to be argued in the trial. And we will be following the trial all week long. To stay in the know, just head to our website, creme.com, for the latest updates. All right, taking a live look outside now. The 60s were so nice yesterday, but it doesn't look like the mild weather is sticking around. Meteorologist Michelle Boss is reporting live from home tonight. And Michelle, some folks are even seeing some showers this afternoon, it sounds like. 
Yeah, mainly across the upper Columbia Basin. We might see a sprinkle before the evening is over, but certainly we've seen cooler temperatures today, about 12 degrees cooler than yesterday as we take a look at satellite and radar right now across the inland northwest. And you can see just a, a few showers across the mountains to our north and northeast, and then a few light showers to our west that may again bring us a passing sprinkle before the evening is over. Most of what you're seeing around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene right now is just ground clutter, but a sprinkle's not out of the question this evening. Temperatures in the lower 40s right now after topping out at 48 degrees here in Spokane. 42 right now in Deer Park. A little bit milder out in central Washington. They were in the upper 50s earlier today. Now Moses Lake sitting at 52 degrees. Uh, cooler 43 in Lewiston right now. Wind speeds, uh, it's been a little bit on the breezy side this afternoon. We're seeing winds in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range. Those will continue this evening, but should settle down overnight. It'll be breezy again tomorrow, so uh, just keep that in mind if you're going to be out and about. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Temperatures settling down into the 30s overnight, but we should stay uh, right at freezing or above for tomorrow morning. Looking at a high of 47 degrees with a few rain and snow showers and then dry weather for this upcoming week for the most part. Monday and Tuesday looking for partly sunny skies. Highs in the middle and upper 40s. Well, big news out of our nation's capital. The Senate passed President Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package, but with changes. The bill includes $1,400 stimulus checks for people who make $75,000 or less a year and two married couples who make less than $150,000 a year together. People who make more than $80,000 a year will not receive a stimulus check, and neither will married couples who make more than $160,000. The bill also extends the $300 unemployment benefit through early September. President Biden says the bill will bring much needed help to Americans. Today, I can say we've taken one more giant step forward and delivering on that promise that help was on the way. For over a year, the American people were told they were on their own. And we've seen how hard that has been on so many Americans. All Senate Republicans voted against the bill, saying much of the package is, is not related to the COVID-19 recovery. It's stuffed with non-COVID related spending that even top liberal economists say is wrong for the recovery. The House is expected to pass the recovery bill as early as Tuesday. New tonight, Safeway will partner with the Department of Health to run Spokane's mass vaccination site. The Department of Health confirmed today Safeway will begin working at the site on Tuesday, March 9th. Safeway will be the site's provider and it will also help with appointment registration. The Department of Health says the site will continue to focus on giving out second doses. However, some first vaccine appointments could be available next week. The Department of Health says how many first appointments are available, if any, depends on how many vaccines the site is allocated from the state. Well, in about two weeks, more people in Washington will be eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. On March 22nd, the state will move to phase 1B, tier 2. Governor Jay Inslee says it's due to the increase in the vaccine supply. This applies to workers in grocery stores, agriculture, prisons, and public transit. Pregnant women 16 and older or anyone living with a disability that puts them at a higher risk for COVID-19 illness will be moved up.